Hey guys, what's up? Lone Berserker here, and in this video, I am going to be talking about the Japanese roster for Men of War Assault Squad 2, and why I think they are extremely powerful and dangerous if you allow your opponent to get a foothold in a, like, let's say a defensive position. If you allow him to, uh, hold one, I think... Japan in that situation is at its best is when it's in its defensive position, but that's beside the point So what first off we have the infantry so just the normal infantry squads We have the recruits assault regular paratroopers SNLF mechanized SNLF combat engineers with AP mines combat engineers with anti-tank mines and mine disposal experts now first of all do you, j the Japanese infantry is very important because it is one of their strongest tools. Now, there is a big difference between the assault infantry and the regular infantry that people seem to overlook quite a bit, actually. And that's the assault infantry. They have more, gu uh, more submachine guns. If you want to read these little things, I'll just leave them up for a minute and you can pause. And here's this one, so... So, they have more submachine guns, and the Japanese submachine gun is 13 um, MP, which is cheaper than most submachine guns. And so, that makes them the best unit to start off with, bolstered by SMGs, as many as you can buy, I would say. So, like, get a squad of these assault infantry at the start, and back them up with SMGs, and you will have a really, really good start, if you obviously play it right. Next, they have their paratroopers, um... They come with rifles. I've bought them before, but I find them almost to be useless. And I know that might sound confusing, but that's because of these guys right here. The SNLF. I am going to spawn them in, by the way. So, these are easily my favorite Japanese unit um, in terms of the infantry. And why is that? Well, not only... Do the majority of them have submachine guns? So that one has one. That one has one. I think they all actually. That one has a machine gun. Machine gun. Submachine gun. Submachine gun. Submachine gun. What the heck is that? M. Okay. I'm not good with guns. So there's eight of them, and you can see there that they're all armed with submachine guns or machine guns, which is very, very important. And two of them come with um rocket launchers. So if you want to troll your team, no, oh, I didn't even kill him. Whatever. <laughs> so, um, two of them come with rocket launchers, which is really important. And so these guys right here can be a really good um, unit to bolster your forces and push your enemy back. And you can do it quite successfully, just based on the skill of these specific soldiers. In in a way, you don't even have to micro them. They also come with a lot of uh, grenades too. So that's them. Then there are the mechanized SNLF, which is just the exact same thing, but with a car. It has three um, three machine guns on it, which is really, really good. It's, again, one of my favorite units. And then you have the regular engineers stuff down here. For singular units, like I said before, the SMG, very good. Get it. It's extremely good and will be really, really useful. Uh, Rifleman, very good in houses or ambush type scenarios that's where they excel in open battlefield they'll get absolutely destroyed by any other infantry so you can see they come with one regular grenade and one anti-tank um they have five shots but let's just select them right here because they got pretty good range so i'm just gonna shoot and look how long it takes them to reload that's in a sense that's basically a um debuff sniper they're not really that good i don't recommend bringing them but they are good to bolster your forces next you have the um tank crew the basic tank crew um anti-rifle infantry if you want to go ahead they're good for small cars i don't recommend them anti-tank i do recommend them they're really good now the, now the machine gunner oh this is fun the machine gunner if you guys didn't know it's cheaper than any other machine gunner in the game um i think the german is 70 or 75 and this is 55 
So that's, in my opinion, that is a huge increase in, um, or an, an increase in advantage because you're making your opponents spend more when, you, when you're just sitting back and spending less. Elite Marksmen, don't bring them. They're useless. I've tried them before. They utterly suck. <laughs> Elite Anti-Tank, they're okay. Um, a basic, basically better version of the Anti-Tank. They come with three guys instead of two. You can see here, nothing really special against about them. But, if you bring the SNLF, you don't have to bring them. So, you can see that. Um, I am going to start killing my own guys here. <laughs> Just so I have more room. Didn't even kill him. Nothing to see here. Okay, that's good. So, um, you have the Elite Support Infantry. Now, I'm going to be real with you. I've never brought this unit in my life. And to be fair, it's just three SNLF soldiers. So, I guess if you want to... Well, how much are they? 130? Don't buy them. Don't buy these guys. There's no real... I don't even see why it's a unit. <laughs> it's kind of useless to me. Just go over there. I don't see why you'd bring them. I guess I guess they do got the better weaponry, so that's good. Uh, flamethrower, basic flamethrower. Sniper and officer, basically. You guys know what those are. What do we have for the transport? And other word I don't know how to pronounce. Um, basic stuff. Same transport vehicle. Uh, mounted mortar. Basic vehicles. Um, and I guess if you want to bring that and have some fun, go ahead. Artillery. Now, this is where Japan has a very strong advantage on people. So you have the heavy machine gun, which another thing, guys, the German machine gun is 100 MP. The he this the Japanese is 90, and I'm pretty sure the Russian is 110 or something like that. So again, another advantage right there. And next, this is my favorite, one of my favorite guns in the game. It's supposed it's an AA gun. But check this out. Look at this. I have I have used this in the past. Look how much I'm firing. I have used this in and look at how much I reload. So, this was a actually historically uh, one of Japan's good weapons. Surprising. That actually was really effective. So, <laughs> so it's really good in my opinion. It's one of my favorite. It's pretty quick. You know, it's not fast, obviously, but it's nice. Not bad. It's relatively cheap for the amount of effectiveness it can get off, and it only has 7.5 control points, so like uh, as much room as you can take. So, in my opinion, get that if you're in a defensive position or if you're trying to push enemies back, because that's really good. So, next we have the Type 94 Mortar, just basic mortar. And next we have this little guy here. This sucker can be the biggest pain in your butt when you're going against Japan now uh, how do I I need to go over here so it has specifications 38 penetration 120 meter range and four second reload time this freaking thing can be extraordinarily destructive and it's so unbelievably cheap so you can see why Japan is very, very good. Um, in why aren't these guys dying? Um, in a defensive position, just due to how cheap and effective their artillery is. All right, whatever. Um, so next we've got the 57 millimeter Type Two, uh, 34 penetration, 120 range, 4.5 reload time. Not bad. It's another basically a. I would say actually a worse version because it has a longer barrel and I know you're probably confused but when it comes to stuff when it comes to artillery and being able to put them near hills and stuff having a shorter ba barrel is very useful next you have the 75 millimeter type 90 a very good gun very strong gun 60 penetration 120 range reload 5.5 seconds um it's a really good gun when it comes to taking down tanks uh not obviously not big big tanks but Next, you have the 75mm Type 4 AA gun. This can be your best friend. It's got 130 range and 92 penetration. If you position that on a hill and get it in a good spot where you can, can check out, you know, um, 
have range over um, the majority of the map, you can basically stop tanks from moving, unless someone obviously mortars you out, but uh, it does come with a car so you can move it around quite a bit, it's, and it only costs 20 control points to keep in here. Next we have the my favorite artillery, the 105 meter type 91 howitzer. This flipping gun, it can take, I've taken down tanks, um, I've cleared out infantry, it's really good, so I'm just going to show you it real quick, just so you can get an understanding of what it is. So, it's got, from what I remember, it's got, look at this, I can almost shoot across the entire map. It's got two, like, 225 range. So, I'm going to shoot, and look at this. It's really, really good, and it's really cheap. It's only 500, and you can easily get a couple of those out. Next, you have the 150mm Type 96, um, a better version. It's got 250 range, so this does have 225. Just the better version, basically. Um, but I would recommend bringing this howitzer because it's cheaper, and it can do the exact same thing that this one can. Next, you have the Honey 2, which is a howitzer mounted. And then you have the ho row, which is a howitzer mounted, but it's better. It's got some more range, got more reload time, but in my opinion, it's much better. Next, <laughs> you got this. This is basically the Japanese secret weapon that nobody expects anyone to bring. So it's got 200 range. It's got 150 reload time. So this is the destruction that this thing can rain down. So just watch it hit this house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could take anything down with it. I'm not even kidding when I say that. I have hit anything I hit, it usually dies immediately. And now I have too much stuff, so we're just going to kill it real quick. But, and that, that right there is why it's so bad, because anything can kill it. Like, anything hits it, and it's just going to die. So I'm just going to destroy everything real quick. And give myself some more room. Come on. You missed. <laughs> what the hell? There we go. We got its engine. Oh my god. There we go. Now it's dead. Okay. So, the problem with that, though, is it's very slow. Very cumbersome. Russian and German artillery easily outdoes it. Because it only has one rocket. And you know, Russian and German, even American, for freaking God's sake, can outrange it and beat it. So it's a last desperate act, I would say, to um, to hold your enemy enemy's big tanks back. So next you have this, I don't recommend it, by the way. I do not recommend this. And I'll show you why in a little bit. We have the support weaponry, Type 92, which I just killed, actually. But it's basically a car with a turret um, that can shoot in multiple directions. Very fast, very good for um, mowing down large groups of infantry. So I, I guess I could say I recommend it. Next you have the Hago and the Kinu. I would recommend bringing the Hago. It's basically a buffed version of the Type 92. It's a small tank. Um, it's got a cannon. It's only 160. It can take out a T-60. Take out almost anything from... Not anything. I'm exaggerating when I say that. But it can take out a lot from behind. Um, it's very fast, very good for flanking. I do recommend it. Next, you have the Chiha 57 and the Chiha 47. I don't recommend the 57, but I do recommend the 47. So it's basically a light tank. It can do very well on its own. It, it can hold its own in fighting. Um, I have used them. I've challenged T-34s with them. They don't win, but... But they hold their own, and that's the that's the important part with Japanese weaponry, is them being able to hold their own. So, it's good. Um, good for an early game tank, or like, to protect your artillery. I do recommend it for that. It does a great job at that. So yeah, I do recommend this. I don't recommend this. Just because, with 40 more points, you get a better tank. Next, you have the Isuzu um, AA. Now... I want to say I recommend this, but I can't, because it sucks so much, and it's just like, like, look, it's good, you know, it's got a good gun, it's basically, I'm pretty sure it's actually that thing mounted right there, it's, it's got a really good gun, 
It reloads pretty quick. But the thing will not fire at all. It just doesn't shoot for some reason. And it dies extraordinarily quickly. So don't bring it. I want to say I want to... I like bringing it. I do like bringing it, but I always lose it. And it doesn't get, end up getting its money's worth. So don't bring it. Just save yourself the time. Now you have the Chihi, the ho I, and the Chinu. Out of these three tanks, I recommend the Chinu. Chihi and ho one just don't cut it. And the Chinu is a buffed version of both of them, basically. So just bring the Chinu. It's better than these two. Don't waste your time with them. It's only 50 more. Well, it's 100 more, but it's 50 more than that. So yeah, bring that. Chi2 is your most effective Japanese tank. Um, you can see, you can check it out here. It has, I need to look at the specifications. 130 range, 92 penetration, really good. Uh, front, 75 armor, and um, 30 for the top. So 75 to 30, pretty quick. Um, really powerful gun, like I just said. And in terms of Japanese tanks, Japan, Japan will always have worse tanks than everybody else. But this tank right here can take out Shermans and it's taken out Panzers before. It can tango with Tigers, but it will lose after like a minute of fighting. But it can hold its own against them for a few minutes. So I'm going to say this is easily your best tank. Most effective tank. So the Chi Ri is a buffed version of the Chi Tu. Um, definitely your best when it comes to taking down. I'm trying to think of a, a moderate tank here. Anything higher than a veteran tiger is going to kill this thing very quickly. But anything lower than that is going to die to it very quickly. So just don't engage it with anything heavier than a tiger, basically. Uh, it's really good. You can see it if you want. It's sort of literally just like a different version of looking version of the Chi 2. So yeah, here they are in their glory. <laughs> so yeah, um, they're pretty good. <laughs> and you can do that. So next, you have your Honey 1. Pretty good. Um, it's not, it's n not going to survive anything. Anything hits this thing and it's going to die. However, if used correctly, it can take down Shermans. Um, anything higher than that, you're screwed, so don't use it. But yeah, I, I have seen it take down Shermans. Very good. And now you have Japan's monster right here. The one thing that Japan has that can beat literally anything other than I would say a panther and a king tiger and possibly a super purging no it, it can take down super purgings actually and I'm pretty sure it can take down IS2s it's got a very it's got a cannon on it for one so you can this is the cannon shooting so that's the cannon um this is its machine gun this is its main gun this sucker right here can blow <laughs> anything into bits. So I recommend it only in the last case scenario because if you lose it, you've lost your best tank for one, obviously. And there are many alternatives to buying this one that can take down Pershings and stuff like that. So only bring this in the de most desperate scenario or if you're trying to help your team win a tank battle. So now you have Japan's special units, and this is where they excel. They have the anti-tank grenade. I'm not going to buy it because, well, it doesn't really matter. But they got the anti-tank grenades. Tank, you know what I'm trying to say. So one guy here, I've got to find him. He's got to have, like, he's the weird looking one. Rifleman. Is this him? This is him. Look at that. So, it sucks that these units cost special points, because there's only one guy who has the gun. It's really fun. I haven't actually used it, but I've seen people use it, and it looks really fun to do. 
and I, it has been used against me. So he can take down tanks, small tanks. Um, he's really, really good when it comes to clearing out um, infantry. He takes a long flip in time to reload here. But hold on. There we go. So yeah, <laughs> like that. Pretty good. Um, I guess it's on the fence in terms of recommendation. I don't know if I recommend them. They're fun. They're pretty good for filler, but you can see they're all riflemen. Wait a minute. Do you get two of these guys? Oh, never mind. You get two. I guess I can recommend them because of that. <laughs> so next you have the Kamikaze, which they all come with submachine guns. They're really good at infantry. They have the stealth ability. Um, they're good for sneaking around the map. They can literally blow tanks up. I'm not kidding when I say that. I've done it before. <laughs> so yeah, it's they're really fun. I don't really recommend them though because they're they're a great loss when um <laughs> when they don't need to be they're kind of crappy in my basically was what i'm trying to say but they are fun they're really fun actually next are the flame tank i think this is the only faction that gets a flame tank it's really fun oh no there's the um the churchill i think gets it the churchill has a flame tank on it and then the croc for america has it so yeah they're are a few other alternatives this is the cheapest though next you have the homeland fury just an elite group of infantry i do recommend them they're very good units there's a lot of them too honey three don't buy this piece of crap it stinks it's horrendous basically <laughs> uh don't bring it waste of points save them <laughs> marine paratroopers for three sp don't bring them I just see it as such a waste, and you're going to see why in a minute here. So now, those were the crappy SP points. You have the ones below them, which are 3 to 9. So the Hori one is the 9 points. So we have the Mortar, which is really good. I do recommend it. It's a better... I think it's... I don't... I hate saying this because I know someone's going to flip and correct me. But I think it's the best Mortar in the game. It does a lot of damage. It's got a big explosion. So I do recommend it. Next, you have the Marine Tank. Now, the Marine Tank is good for infantry sp specifically and small, small tanks. Um, I do recommend it. It's good in terms of um, blowing up a lot of infantry. And the reason I say that is because the only shell it gets is a heat shell. So it's kind of crappy when it comes to tank battles. Don't use it in tank battles, but it's really great for... Um, taking out infantry radio operator is just your basic one i never use them i think they're a waste bonsai <laughs> it sounds fun it is fun but it's a big waste don't bring it you get two crappy tanks and a bunch of infantry and usually they all just end up dying because you know you just send them at your enemy so don't bring them i don't recommend them but they are fun if you want to have some fun when you're if you're like losing and you want to go for a last massive charge or if you want to um, maybe, I guess, uh, finish your enemy off, use them. And now you have my favorite weapon in the game. This right here. This sucker. This is why I said not to bring the Hatu. It does the exact same thing as the Hatu. And it's way less expensive. I think it's got the same range as the Hatu. It has 200. So I'll just shoot it here so you guys can see what it does. being shot yeah look at that literally just a small version of the ha two, but it can do the same exact thing so i 100 percent recommend this guy he's very good very fun um but he is on foot so that sucks so you got to kind of run him around um i think let me get a car here i got stuck on something I think you can connect them to cars. Yes. So that, okay, that makes them really good. So now you can transport them around, um, dodge rockets and stuff like that. So yeah, 100% recommend that. And now you have the Hori one. So it's a better than the Hori two, but it's a nine SP points and you can get a lot of better stuff than it that can do the exact same work so i don't recommend it it's just so, so pointless in my opinion why would you really 
bring it when it costs 9 SP. So yeah, don't bring that. Um, bring all the other stuff I mentioned. <laughs> except Bonsai. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I went over everything. Let me just check in case I missed everything. Pretty sure I went over everything. Yeah. So, that's the Japanese roster. And in my opinion, it's amazing. <laughs> I know a lot of people dislike it because you don't get big tanks, but as Japan, you don't need big tanks. Truly, because you're making your opponent waste all of his infantry trying to assault you. And honestly, buying the assault infantry, let's just check them out. Buying these guys, you get so many submachine guns that you're going to win the infantry fight and it's near impossible to lose. So there's one. That's a rifle. That's a submachine gun. That's a submachine gun. That's a rifle. That's a submachine gun. Rifle, submachine gun. One, two, three, four, five submachine guns. And then I think you can afford like two or three at the start. Seven submachine guns at the start is going to give you one heck of an infantry advantage. Use that infantry advantage combined with your light tanks and your opponent won't be able to have the time to buy a big tank. If he does, then artillery it up. <laughs> But yeah, that's basically it. So I think Japan is and another thing. Um I think Japan is greatest in building fighting because of their submachine guns. And they also I'm pretty sure some of these guys, I got to find it though. I think some of them have bombs. Like I'm not even kidding when I say that. Uh they have the anti-tank. Do you have it? Hold on a minute. I'm pretty sure. Anti tank. I thought there was something here literally called the hand bomb. Hand bomb. Well, maybe not. I think I might be losing my mind, guys. But also. In my opinion, Japan has the greatest grenades. Well. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Japan has really good grenades. They're also really fun. So, yeah, here's Japan's submachine gun for you. So I recommend them. The <laughs> submachine guns are the greatest of them all. Well guys, I'm pretty sure that's it. So that's the Japanese roster. I don't see why people hate on Japan so much saying they can't deal with tanks. They 100% can. Just don't challenge them one on one. Unless you have the Hori 2 or the Hori 1. Um, but yeah, don't challenge tanks head on in a 1 versus 1. You will lose and then you're going to blame Japan for being a bad faction when you're just a bad player. <laughs> well, that's about it. And you can also see how slow this thing is. So yeah, it's very slow. Um, but it's got a pretty good gun on it. Alright guys, well, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you liked this video. And have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.